Welcome to Trier Wilderness. For those of you that are not familiar with Trier Wilderness, my name is Tammy Trier, and my family and I embarked on an off-grid journey a decade ago. Uh, we are now embarking on a new off-grid journey. Uh, I am sitting in our old homestead, which we have been caretaking. We sold it, um, God sold it on Good Friday, and we are gearing up to start building our new off-grid tiny cabin. So um, welcome, and we've got lots of great things to share with you guys uh, today and moving forward. Uh, as we move forward here, uh, within the next week or so, two weeks, we will be starting to mill our logs and get our home under construction. We currently have our holes dug and our concrete pillars in and have worked the land, removing all the stumps and debris out of our building location and working over the raw wilderness land and as well as getting a garden and greenhouse area prepared. So if you are new to us, I hope you will hit the subscribe button below and uh, the notification button and stay tuned because we will be doing a lot of video and sharing. Most likely it will be live video footage uh, a lot of the time because it's a whole lot easier while I am helping to build. I don't have a whole lot of free time. So uh, good morning, Miss Tammy. I am going to share this video really quick on Facebook and we will get going. How are you guys doing that are on here while? Wow. Good morning, Miss Shelley. I have a question that I put out to our Facebook yesterday, and I'm going to ask you guys the same thing. If money was not an issue, what is one thing you would do right now? So go ahead and share that with me. I will be bringing that up as we go throughout the day, but uh, I want to get this on our Facebook page. So. We picked up our helping hands uh, two days ago. I am so excited to have uh, Mountain Christopher joining us. Uh, Glenn's cousin has joined us and uh, he will be helping us build the cabin. He was also a part of our original guest cabin on our original homestead. So I'm excited to have him here. He is such a joy and pleasure to be around and he is very knowledgeable in a construction field also. That is what he has been delving into. And uh, this will be absolutely awesome. Just having that extra set of hands for one, so that when I hit my max, I'm not stopping us. I have someone else that can step in. Uh, I definitely, uh, overdid it on the pillars and digging the holes. I did suffer quite a bit on that, but I did it. I couldn't have done it a year ago, so I am not complaining, but I need to pace myself and set some limitations so that I'm useful and not flat on my back. So I got that shared on Facebook, so hopefully we will have some people joining us, and I wanna uh, jump in here and see what you guys have been sharing. My arm is not long enough today. Okay, let's see here. All right, so Tammy says, I would move to more land and be more self-sufficient. Awesome. Uh, Kelly, Shelly, sorry. Shelly says, I would search for an, an acreage that we could homestead on. Awesome. Okay, so now that you've shared that, we're going to jump back on that in a little bit. What I'd like to know right now is how you're doing. Um, say what? Terrible. You're terrible? terrible? Mountain Man just joined me. He's terrible. Why are you terrible? Um, You're all right. Um, I see. Did you did you put gas? Yes. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure, so I wanted to ask quick while you were here. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. See, there he is. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Oh, it's it's terrible. It's terrible. It's so rough. He's got it so rough. Poor guy. Anyway, <laughs> did you figure it out? What? Up there. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, we are jumping from project to project. It's really crazy. Um, two days ago, three days ago, it's a blur. All the big stuff has been moved. Everything's out of here. Uh, we are really going to have a heavy duty two weeks um, finishing off this place and then setting up camp 
we will be living in the wall tent again. Yes, I'm so excited about that. And setting up our outdoor kitchen and easy. Well, I don't want to pick you up at the bottom of the steps. I won't tell you what to do, but you're going to want me to pick you up. So then you're going to have to listen. <laughs> you yell at me. <laughs> What'd you do? Leave Christopher up there? He's hiding. I see. All right. Get now. You yell at me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sorry. We will be getting everything set up up there and going gangbusters because we... We are behind the eight ball. Um, we weren't intending to be that way, but you know, you have to roll with life. Life throws you all kinds of things. It doesn't always go the way you want it to. You have to wait on things. You have to be patient and you've got to wait on God's timing. So, and everything has been going very flawlessly, I'm sure in God's order. So we're just gonna keep rolling. JJ and Gideon are painting the garage that he recited last week. Awesome, I'm sure that makes you happy. And I imagine that will uh, take you one step further or closer to your eventual goal. Um, the thing is, guys, I put that Facebook post out yesterday, uh, the question I, that I asked you, and I'm going to keep asking that. I'd like to see you guys all chime in on that and share with me, you know, if money wasn't an object, what would be one thing that you would do right now? And most people can answer that very quickly. But that's where you stop and you don't continue to visualize that one thing that you want. And some people were very quick to share a whole bunch. And that's good. That means that you've got a lot of dreams and desires. But the thing is, we often have these dreams and desires and we, we think about them and then we stop them right there dead in their tracks. And um, a lot of times it's because of money. Um, a lot of times it's because of the concern of other people, um, how they may feel about that. Uh, there's a lot of reasons our dreams and our desires get stopped. And the thing that we've got to do and learn to do is keep that dream and that desire close. Keep it fresh. Keep it in our, in our minds. Visualize what it will be like, you know, Taste it, want it, desire it really bad. And maybe you do. And keep doing that and keep looking at that and focusing on that. And, and by doing so, you will gradually start making your dream a reality. We wouldn't be here if we didn't live that way. You know, we had the idea, we visualized it heavily we desired it heavily the other connecting piece to that is that we prayed heavily about it and we asked god that if it was in his will to open those doors we have so much more power in our prayers and in our thought processes to make things happen today's topics are how are you what is the one thing that you would desire and the other is realizing that negativity and positivity cannot exist in the same space. And if you haven't realized it yet or not, all those things go together. Because when we can keep that flow going and realize that we have control over our destiny, over our dreams, over our life, over the outcome of our, our dreams and our wishes, um, we have tremendous power. I want to put a huge praise out there. You know, speaking of prayer and talking about how the power of prayer can boost our dreams. Um, you guys have been helping me pray for my dear friend, Pat Kenny, and his son-in-law, Mark. They both have multiple myeloma, which is an incurable cancer. The chemo and radiation uh, did a number on Pat's heart and really... Um, gave him great struggles. Uh, Mark, his multiple myeloma has weakened his uh, bones. He actually ha had a cage installed internally on his ribs and spine to help keep it together because his skeletal system is that weak and, and deteriorated because of the cancer. 
but you guys have been helping me pray and pray hard for quite some time for these gentlemen. And, you know, I view Pat as like a father figure on this earth. Um, he is such a tremendous, positive, spirited person, as is Mark. And I attribute their healing processes and, and that also to their positive way of living and thinking. And uh, Pat messaged to let me know the other day and to thank us all. So I want to extend that because it wasn't just a thank you to uh, my family and I. It was a thank you to all of you guys as to... The power of prayer he is in remission with his multiple myeloma and so is mark so thank you guys for helping me pray for these men because like i said they are huge powerful prayerful figures in my life and i'm just thoroughly excited to know that they are in remission and that god is wrapping his loving arms and healing arms around these guys and <laughs> I've got toilet paper flying in my house from up top to down below. He's not, at least he's not throwing it at me. <laughs> We're still moving things. So some of the things, the smaller things are being relocated. So anyway, I just saw Miss Deb join me. Good morning, my sweet sister and sister. So grateful to hear and see you. Likewise, and I did get your message yesterday. I'm sorry I did not respond. Um, yesterday, we were all going, blah, 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 blah. we were exhausted, extremely zapped from being in the big city, and we didn't get home till 1 a.m. that yesterday morning, just uh, going doing an airport run and dropping things at Austin's as well. So it was kind of a crazy day. So we were just exhausted yesterday, but I'm, I am happy to be here. I'm happy to... Um, have you guys joining me? Deb, one of the questions that I asked everybody is, if money was not an issue, what is one thing that you would do and would like to do right now? Um, oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your grace. because, And for those of you that are watching the replay or watching this, if you have messaged me and I have not responded to you, please don't think I'm blowing you off. Please don't feel unloved. We are just at a very extreme and very rapid pace right now. So being able to keep up is long uh, an option for me, long gone, it's gone. I, I'm, I'm not able to keep up like I was once able to. I will regain that again periodically and I will catch up with you when I have a moment. Oftentimes Sunday afternoons I try to reconnect with some people that I haven't had the chance to follow up with. So please don't feel unloved or forgotten. So the other question is I had asked is how are you guys? It's really important. We talked last week about self-monitoring and you know paying attention to what we are saying to ourselves, paying attention to how we are feeling. Um, those things are important when you're going through life, but it's even more so important when you're going through the chaotic times that we are going through. There's so much change, so much unrest, so much division, so much just chaos, and it's all around us in a variety of different ways. For some of us, it's not super close. For others, it's real close. Uh, for some of you, you may have lost loved ones through this uh, pandemic, so... <laughs> It's important that we self-monitor and realize where we are, how we are feeling, and realize also that we have the power to change that. You know, like I said, we have, the power of prayer is huge, and so many people discredit it. So often, you know, people are like, yeah, I'll pray for you, and, and they don't follow through. Prayer is one of our greatest and most useful tools, and we need to use it, and not only just be in prayer, but be in communion, be in fellowship with God on a regular basis. I am talking to God on a daily basis throughout my day as I'm doing things. Um, it's, it's, it's extremely important to me. And I've gained so much as a result of that. And I want to see you guys have that same thing that's offered to me. It's offered to you too. So suck it up, utilize it, and, and, and gain from it. So, <laughs> I feel like I'm at the bad end of a bad joke. These guys are doing all kinds of crazy stuff next to me, and I'm always scared. And rightfully so. What? Rightfully so. Where? <laughs> 
So anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna spin this around and show you something quick besides my heaps, bounds, and chaos. Yeah, look at that mess. There are the two loved ones. M Mrs. is laying on her red bandaged arm. Um, we've been doing lots of praying on her behalf, and if you could continue to pray for her. Um, I mentioned last week that she had had surgery. She went last Wednesday for surgery. And Thursday, we brought her home. Wednesday, when I picked her up, she was excited to see me and jumped into the vehicle and blew open stitches. She had a lump on her arm that we thought was a hematoma uh, from jumping in the back of our pickup. And it ended up being cancer. So they removed that as well as some spots on the back of her hocks, which was also cancer. And um, cancer tends to go on the legs of, and form on the legs of big dogs. So um, we noticed another spot on the other leg. So if you would uh, please pray for her because um, they stitched her up in the back of my vehicle, but they did not give us any antibiotics. They should have, um, but the spot got infected and then she also blew more stitches. So she's got a section about this big on her leg that's wide open that they cannot restitch and needs, it needs to heal on its own. So now after a second visit to the vet um, and a lot of money, um, she is on some heavy duty antibiotics and it seems to be healing well, but it's in a bad spot. She's a big dog, she does, she's active. It's hard to slow her down. So I've been doing a lot of babysitting, but if you could please pray because they had, remember last week how I said that her vet bill was almost $400 and I, and I got a credit of 433 on the propane and that it would probably work out real well right there. Well, this was one that didn't. Um, they contacted me before I came to pick her up to let me know the amount of the bill so that I wasn't in total uh, shock and ready to like uh, go nuts when I came to pick her up. Uh, it was actually three times the amount of what they estimated. So um, prayers are appreciated for funding uh, and for her healing <laughs> and for us because it's been quite the shuffle. Uh, when we went and did our airport run, we had to really uh, stabilize the house because she's not supposed to be doing stairs. Uh, so pray for the mountain man's back too because he's been uh, hefting her duffer butt of 120 plus pounds up and down the steps for the last seven to 10 days here. So, um, but they got it all and it shouldn't return. It's a type of cancer that really gets fingers and spreads very rapidly. So the fact that that showed up and continued to be there very, uh, as quick as it had, is an indicator of its rapid growth. So we did find another one that looks very similar on her other leg that just formed. So obviously we can't do anything about that right now till this one heals. Um, but just with everything we've got going on, it's really hard. That's got to stay clean. It's got to stay, she's got to stay laying, which is darn near an impossibility. So thankfully it happened when it did and we weren't in the wall tent because it would have been very hard to keep that clean and uh, be able to change things in a clean environment. So we've got roughly two weeks here for that to heal. So uh, prayers would be appreciated. So I think I saw some more comments coming through here. Um, I just wanted you to know you are being prayed for and know you are making a lot of changes. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, um, thank you. You are prayed for as well, and I appreciate that. Um, God leads me in these. Uh, I, I don't take the credit for any of this, and um, I pray every time I get on here that God uses me, that I can uh, be a shepherd uh his flock while I am online and live so thank you uh, we give him all the all the credit for that and the glory but I love you and I appreciate your prayers and we are you are such a huge um, blessing to our community Deb so thank you and um, actually uh, Deb asked are they Rhodesian Ridgeback crosses okay copper is full uh, bred Rhodesian and what's really funny is the one next to her is 
actually a blue pit and a black mouth cur cross. But standing side by side, the only real difference between the two is the smaller one, his nose is shorter and he doesn't have the ridge. Um, but they look very similar. And um, I, I'll tell you what, um, I love, Copper is such a very loyal and very protective dog. She is mine. She, she connected with me and that's part of the struggle here is that when I move, she moves. When I go somewhere, she goes. And it, that's what has made this so challenging. I was really struggling the beginning of this week because there was so much I needed to do up in the container that I couldn't go to do. And I had everything packed, but I didn't feel like I was being productive or useful because I was watching dogs. So it was a bit of a challenge for me. I had to re, I had to uh, self-monitor a little bit. Um, but she is a great dog. I mean, I would be very fearful for somebody that came after me as to what she would do to them because she's a very big and very powerful dog and she doesn't take kindly to uh, me being in danger. Um, and the little guy, um, he's um, a really very lovable dog. Let's just put it that way. He's got a really, you know, a lot of people freak out over pits, but um, I've yet to meet a pit that has a bad demeanor. Um, it's just like kids that are raised poorly, you know. Um, he, he's a really good natured dog and uh, pits are very loyal too. So, uh, but the black mouth cur I'd never heard of before and they are used a lot in hunting um, down south. Uh, so really, really neat breed. And, and thank you for asking, good, good eye. Prayers for them and her hard to keep active big dogs quiet. Yeah, no kidding, it's been quite the challenge. Plus we have baby kittens outside that she loves and um, for those of you that don't know, Rhodesian Ridgebacks are bred to hunt lions. So to have cats, it just drives her crazy. When we first brought them home a couple years ago so that we had mousers here, she was pointing them in the driveway and stalking them. So it was quite a challenge to separate that. And I felt bad that we were torturing her, uh, but she's taken to one of the cats. Um, she has taken to a very white, all white, fuzzy, um, long-haired, blue-eyed Olaf. I named him Olaf because of the movie. And uh, so that those two are buddies. It, he actually sits on her back and she walks around with him on her back and nuzzles him and licks him to death. So I'm excited about that because I really love that cat. Um, Deb says they are gorgeous dogs. I trained a roadie years ago. Awesome intelligence. Yeah, they really, they really are very smart. She knows exactly what I'm saying. Um, I haven't been able to uh, talk about going on my strolls. Uh, we usually use the four-letter word that starts with a W, but I can't even do that because if I spell it, she knows what it is. So, and she gets extremely excited. So, they've been kind of all been steadfast because I can't leave and, and that's something that's part of has been part of our routine is that we do that every day uh, between two and five miles so um, once we can start doing that again it will be good it certainly gets rid of their extra energy as well and uh, gets them to nestle in but it's crazy when we were doing the concrete well let me jump back when we were here building our it was our healer and I had a, an English pointer, a bird dog, um, who we actually uh, gifted to um, an older fella and his uh, grandson because he is made to run. Um, and he would run our 150 acre farm back east and stay on the perimeter. Well, that's what he was doing here. Only thing is if he's caught running and there's deer in front of him, people will shoot him because they think he's running after the deer and he just wouldn't stay still. And he was used to being at my feet and it just didn't work when we were building. However, the healer um, went into complete protective mode and was constantly just stalking us. And we would be spread out on this homestead building, doing different things. And he would go from one to the other. And by the time we got in this house eight and a half months later, he was exhausted and didn't even want to go outside because he was so busy having to have been in surveillance mode. 
And when we were up doing the concrete, that's instantly what she started to do. So when we get up there and we are building, these dogs are going to be in surveillance mode and in protective mode, keeping an eye out for us because they know that we won't be able to, you know, we're busy working. So they, they are our, our eyes. And what's crazy is about a mile, we saw a friend of ours saw mountain lion head into the, the wilderness. So it is good that they're there keeping an eye out. But it's amazing what they do. And it's amazing having good dogs on the homestead. That's really an important aspect of things. It keeps the uh, predators at bay, but also they keep a good eye out uh, for us as well. So it's good to have dogs when you're doing this kind of stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm thankful, and it'll be a really fun time up there when we get really heavy into uh, building our home. I'm just so excited about that. We will be thankful to unload all the other things that have been keeping our attention and that, and that we've been so diversified with. It'll be nice to just have one thing to concentrate on. And I'll be excited for the new homeowner as well to be here because with everything going on, he's had his struggles um, getting out of Alaska and uh, getting here and through the borders. It's been quite a challenge for him. So uh, I think we'll all rest easy this winter and, and be chilling greatly. But um, really do the self-monitoring. Really pay attention to how you're thinking. And when you have something in your dreams and in your sights, um, stay focused on it. You know, pray that it's in, it aligns with God's will. You know, sometimes certain things that we want and we pray for, uh, we tend to uh, turn into idols. And when, when they turn into idols, that's because we want it, but it's not really in God's will. So when we want it though, when it's in God's will, the doors will open. And you got to understand that it's in God's timing also. You know, not everything happens at the snap of a finger and it could take years for things to come into fruition. But when you pray about it and you know that you're feeling strongly that it is uh, God's will for you and you keep focused on it and keep your eye on the prize, that positive focus on that will help things all just kind of mesh and come together. So don't feel like your dream is ever too big to be attained because remember, um, God adds the supernatural to our natural thinking and things are possible. So don't, don't cut yourself short. Don't think that you can't embrace things. The other thing is, is if you're desire and dream is attainable now and money isn't stopping you, keep in mind that most likely you are stopping yourself from attaining that goal. I saw some of the things that people said um, were uh, changing of jobs, get out of this job that they didn't like. Um, i trying to think of some of the other things. But that one specifically spoke to me in that, you know, if you don't like it, What's stopping you from making that change now? Now, I realize that getting a job is hard right now because you need to be in a lot of places you need to be considered essential. Um, so it could be a little more difficult now to, to do that. But at the same time, if what you desire is doable right now, why hold yourself back? Why wait? You know, I watch people in our country, you know, focus on the job, do the job that they don't like, to pay for the house that they don't stay in because they're too busy working, and working with their eye on the prize to be able to retire and enjoy life. And when they get there, they're either too worn out, too ill, or don't have the funding that they want to do what they've been dreaming about their whole life. Where and that's society's mold that we have that everybody thinks they have to follow but it's not in writing anywhere it's not mandated it's not a law and we are entitled to live our lives the way we desire to live our lives so keep all that in mind i want to strike a chord here because you know that's one thing that we've done different is we we've, we've stepped out and we are living life by our terms there have, that has caused conflict for a lot of people. Um, we live with less to have more. 
and um, people didn't understand that desire for us to want to live that way because they couldn't imagine it themselves. They wouldn't want to live that way, but we do, and we enjoy it, and we find great pleasure in it rather than having to seek material things all the time for pleasure and joy, we seek the simplicity of our life for the joy and happiness. And um, it really caused a lot of problems in, in some relationships for us. And that's okay because we, we were living for our, you know, we have to focus on our needs, our desires, our joys and happiness and, and, and that's what's important, and, and walking things out in, in God's will. So, that being said, if your dreams are attainable now, as I've always said, the best things in life are on the other side of our comfort zone, and a lot of times people are afraid to st take that step out of their comfort zone to attain these things. But right now, what do we have to lose? I, I really look at it that way, um, you know, what do, we, what do we have to lose in making that attempt? You know, in order to succeed in life, we need to fail a lot of times. Uh, you know, those failures are our stepping stones to successes. But uh, for some people, when they fail, that is the debilitating stop mark where they no longer try. And we have found, and as you can see, by our failures, we have been able to continue to keep going forward and make things happen. And even through adversity, which we all are going to experience and in multiple ways and in a constant flow, because life is not just, it's not just joys and happiness and valleys. It's a mesh of that together. And when you realize that you're gonna have adversity and struggles and you still focus on the good throughout it, that's where you really find um, the utopia. And that's why I said negativity and positivity can't stay together and live in the same space. You can't be depressed and still be happy. So you've gotta choose. And the thing is, um, we've got to seek gratitude. And the more you seek gratitude, the more you will push the negativity out of your life because you will be breeding more happiness and gratitude in your life. And that's why I've themed today's um, live in that fashion in that we have got to continue to seek the good in our lives, keep our eyes on the prize, self-monitor so that when we are in a mode of negativity that we are able to pull ourselves back out of it. The best way to stay in gratitude is to start your day in gratitude by listing, you know, I know people that list 75 things that they are grateful for every day. If you need to start with one and find one thing that you're grateful for to start your day and then end your day the same way, find something that happened or something throughout the day that you are grateful for. And if you can only find one thing, then focus on that one thing. If you can list 75, go for it. Because the more you focus on the things you are grateful for in your life, the more you will bring into your life more gratitude and more things to be grateful for. I think Shelly left a couple comments. Yes. Okay. Let me see here. Um, oh, Shelly says, I cannot wait to watch you build your new home. I'm very excited. I'm so very excited. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to power everything and be able to continue to record when one dies, but we're, and, and to keep them from being destroyed while we are building and dogs are running loose and all that. Cause you see often when I'm recording here, how they're underneath the tripods and everything. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to vamp that. And I get a lot of footage, like every day I'm taking pictures and footage of the different things. And then it's like, I don't have the time to put it all together. So most likely what's gonna happen at the very end of the process 
is a flowing video of the process from start to finish. Um, and in the midst of that, we are going to jump on here and there and show you what we've got going on. Um, he is also going to do a video of the process of the build to help people um, that may want to do the same thing uh, so that they are aware and know all the steps that need to be done. We're going to try our best to videotape that as we go, um, but it's it's going to be a crazy process, but I'm thoroughly excited. And I want to give a shout out and, and just um, a mention as well today. I'm super excited. Um, Mother Earth News has blessed me with the opportunity to share this journey with the world and do a series on our new build. And I am able to do that at whatever pace I'd like. Right now, I'm looking at once a month just because I think that's attainable for me. But if I'm able to do more, we will do more there as well. And that will also be sharing the video footage. Um, so if you go to MotherEarthNews.com and search for Tammy Trier, you will find my uh, articles being shared there as well. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I've got a bunch of articles coming out in several different magazines. New Pioneer will have several and um, Backwoods uh, Survival and Prepper Survival is also another one. I know I'm not saying that right, so I'll get back to you on that because these are two new magazines that I am starting to write for, which I'm super excited about. Um, so yes, in the midst of all this chaos, I am still doing my writing, but uh, there's lots of inspiration. And I am so thankful to have you guys joining us on this build because it's, I hope and pray that through what we are doing, it shows people that you can still do these things yourself. There's always a time in our lives where we're going to have to learn new skills, but what we are doing is attainable and what we are doing, others can can follow and learning these skills or bartering skills to be able to set yourself up on a homestead is so doable. It's just a matter of wanting it bad enough and being willing to persevere through the good, the bad, and the ugly because we're going to have that. Um, I mean, we've already had that in different degrees where I've gotten sick and have had setbacks or he's um, had struggles with things. And in our initial build, we really ran into that a lot because we had a lot of uh, equipment breaking. So we've been able to upgrade and do new things as we go. And another important aspect of all of this is learning to invest in quality items, whether it's uh, attire for the jobs um, or equipment for the jobs and, and power tools. You know, everything, we don't spend money on frivolous things, but when we need equipment, we always, and, and attire even, because like we were watching a video the other night, for example, and somebody was using a chainsaw in shorts and he was like, wow, because He's got a scar on his leg where he um, caught himself with a chainsaw and it was, it was an accident. It wasn't something um, out of carelessness. He was cutting a huge tree down and, there, and it was in between buildings and he dropped the tree where it needed to go, um, but it kicked on him and when he jumped back, he actually was that, it was that close that it, he hit the one building and it caused the saw to come down. So wearing the right gear, now he has chaps. He always wears, and that was part of our rule with Austin is if he was gonna use a chainsaw, he needed to wear the um, chainsaw chaps and the head shield and because chainsaws kick a lot and stuff happens and you never know through a knot in a tree or if somebody put a nail in a tree or whatever that you might, or barbed wire that grew into a tree, you know, you hit that stuff, it causes weird things to happen. So just having the right gear and investing in good quality equipment is important. And, and we had good quality things, but as we were progressing on, they were getting used hard. So it's, 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 it's important that we have good gear. Footwear is important too, which we will talk about at another point, because what is your most used part of your body on a daily basis? Your feet. So we'll talk about that at another time too, but I see messages coming through here. It's 
it is so tiring trying to keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> yeah, and there's no need, right? It's so hard to think otherwise when it is taught to us as, as we grow. Long ago, I gave up with this thought process. Yeah, exactly. And you know, as I was sharing earlier about people not understanding our lifestyle, that was the mentality. You know, you needed to be bigger and better and have a greater paycheck and and nicer things. And, and what do those things serve if all you're doing is dusting them and looking at them? My pleasure in my home is that my my joys come out of using and utilizing my treasures, like my coffee grinder that hangs on the wall and my, my hand mixer and, and the varying tools that I use. And that gives me pleasure so much more than having to dust something and just look at it. And, um, and I do dust things, but the things I dust are the things I utilize on a daily basis. They, they are my decorations, they are my useful tools. It's, all, it's all, all a matter of our personal preferences. And there is nothing wrong, I guess, with keeping up with the Joneses if that's what you wanna do. But I don't want the burden of the debt, the financial debt, the, fin the stress that comes with it in trying to keep up with that. I am who I am and I am the same person regardless who I am with, what I am doing. You know, I, I am who I am. I am, I am, God made me the way I am and I don't wanna have to put on a facade or change or be somebody different in another environment. That's just not who I am. And you are exactly right, Shelly. It is just darn right tiring to try to do that. And that's part, I think, why the mountain man and I just so much enjoy each other's company versus being in big crowds with people and going to different parties and all that because it's just so draining. And we just, we thrive on the simplicity. So yes, exactly. When you break away from that thought process and, and that need to keep up and that need to follow suit of what was ingrained in you as you were growing up is very freeing. How about it? And it is just such, you, you step into a freedom like you've never felt before. And to me, that freedom is more important to me than anything else. And what else is more important to me is being who I am. You know, God made us the way we are for a reason and we aren't made to compete or to be better than anybody else. We are, we are meant to love and, and to seek joy and happiness and just, I don't know, I love my life and I wouldn't change it and I, I'm not here to compete with anybody. I do love friendly competition though, you know, uh, but not like that. Miss Deb says, I love Mother Earth News Magazine. Awesome for you. Yes, thank you. I am excited. I am very, very excited. And oh, Deb says, oh my golly, that's idiot to run a chainsaw in shorts. Good for mountain man wearing the right gear. Yeah, it's important, you know, um, we aren't so far out that uh, we can't get um, help when needed, but we've had to have the ambulance come back here once already, and it's a challenge. We're gated in, the gate is a mile away, it's locked, you know, so there's challenge involved. And had it only been he and I, and, and the mountain boy hadn't been here, I'm not sure how, you know, I would have gotten, I would have had to try to get him into the vehicle and get out there to unlock the gate and meet them there. You know, there's challenges. And the thing is, when our desire is to be 100 miles in the middle of nowhere, like in, the, in Alaska somewhere. And there, you know, you're at the mercy of your own um, abilities as well as um, being thoughtful and careful in your actions because you don't want to get carelessly get injured because of uh, stupidity or carelessness. And the same applies here. When we were building here initially, there was no service whatsoever. And then we got a, a bag phone that bounced off repeaters on the mountain and you had 15 minutes to spew out whatever you needed and then your connection was lost because it's an emergency line for the loggers. Now we have voice over internet uh, abilities to call, but I still can't call 911. I have to know the number I want to call and, and be direct about it to get help back here. And I can also call in a, you know, uh, a helicopter if necessary through the one program that we have. Um, 
So it's called MediFlight. Um, so we still have to be really careful in what we're doing. And, you know, with all that we've got going on, an injury is, is bad because it would debilitate us and stop the process. So thinking of all those things is extremely important and taking care and, and not being careless when you're doing things, even if you are in the city, you know, being thoughtful in those things and, and thinking ahead in those things is extremely important. And, and especially in a preparedness situation, you know, being able to um, really have a plan in place and, and being conscious of all of those things. Yes, quality is most important, exactly. When you have things and, and you're purchasing things, if you're purchasing things just to purchase things and you're not buying quality, you're wasting your money because you're going to have to repurchase it again. And granted, sometimes that does happen, that it's a necessity because that's the only way you can do it. But if you can plan ahead and prepare and save and purchase the quality, it will save you. Plus, the important thing is taking care of what you have so that it lasts you a long time. Deb says, most everything, jobs, activities, and experiences in my life have all come from passion and always paid their way with blessings along the way. I've lived a lot of life with very little money. Exactly. And, you know, one of the fellows that we follow on YouTube, he used to be the boss of the swamp. It's now homesteading and off-grid living with the boss of the swamp. He's awesome. And I, will have, I have something really exciting to share about him in the future, but I can't share yet. Um... But one of the things he's always done is in life when he needed to learn a skill, like say he needed to learn how to use a backhoe or a, a, a bulldozer or a bobcat or whatever, he'd go get a job in that construction field and learn how to run that equipment so that moving forward he knew how to use it. So he, he always, and, and if he wanted to, say he wanted to do landscaping at his place and create a greenhouse or whatever. So he'd start a business landscaping so that the business would pay for all of his equipment and needs so that he could create what he wanted to and, and have the benefit of tax returns and different things like that. So, you know, when I tell you guys to step out of your comfort zone and dive into your dreams, there's many ways we can go about it. There's many ways you can look at it. For those of you that want to find land or do homesteading um, in a different location, this just popped in my head. One thing to look into is caretaking. You know, when you can, especially in a certain area, if you want to get to a certain area to homestead, but you can't afford the property right off the bat, consider caretaking somewhere. A lot of times the caretaking jobs come with the guest house for the caretaker and then you can make money while you're living there. Um, that's also a good way to feel out if you wanna become a homesteader and you wanna do the beginning aspects of homesteading but you're not sure you wanna bite off and purchase a property, caretaking for somebody else and getting your feet wet, learning the skills you might need to learn while you are caretaking a property and prepare yourself to embark on that journey on your own while you're making money, learning the skills. So there's lots of ways we can do things. And the, the happier we are with the simplicity of life and, the, and living simply, the more value comes to your money because you don't need to invest it in things that the average person would, would invest it in. You know, the first thing that pops in mind is a zillion million pairs of shoes. You know, I was guilty of that. I worked in an office. I had the three inch heels and shoes to match the different outfits. I mean, when I moved here, I gifted a lot of stuff. Right now, I have like three pairs of shoes that I go to and, and utilize. I have a pair of sandals that I jog in, walk in, run in, work in. I have, they're Keens, so they're like uh, really good for my feet. I have my Keens and I have my boots. And you know, when you are able to live simply, your money goes so much further. So I totally get what Deb's saying and there's so much to gain from that. So much to gain from that. Shelly says, I have to get rid of more stuff out of my house, but want to have the uh, renovations done so I do not get rid of stuff I might need. I'm hoping to pare down to just above my home echoing. And that's what we've been saying. 
my container is going to be bursting at the seams when we get uh, the only thing remaining in here is our bedroom suit and, and these chairs I'm sitting on. Um, very minimal stuff. Uh, the big thing that's going to be getting moved is my pantry and we'll be putting the refrigerator and the freezer up in there. Um, but it's going to be busting at the seams and it kind of aggravates me because we don't need all that stuff. I know we don't need all that stuff, but I don't know what we're going to need as we are getting into this house and as we are building our two guest cabins. So as, like Shelly said, it's, it would be really um, poor planning to get rid of things and then have to buy them later. Even if you're getting them at a second hand, you're still having to reinvest. So it's smart thinking to do it that way and then to downsize and download you know, unload as you go when you're, when you're finished. I think I, I totally agree with you. We're in the same boat. I will get great pleasure once everything is in place to just unload stuff because I don't like stuff. It's clutter. It's very organized up there. I know where everything is. You'd ask me where something is. I can go right to it and get it. That was the whole, um, idea behind putting things in there and and labeling things and organizing things in the shed so they could go in there a certain way and putting the things in the front that we're going to use the first or the things in the front that are going to go into the house you know so good planning there's I, I talked with you guys two weeks ago or three weeks ago about being able to plan a big project thinking of all these things like even right now i'm packing the kitchen to go up to create an outdoor kitchen I need things enclosed so that the mice aren't getting into things and things aren't dirty that need to be cleaned so that I'm eliminating having to wash extra things all the time. You know, when you plan ahead and think ahead and have a plan, things go so much better, so much better. And that's why I'm telling you now that one thing that you would do right now, start planning. Because as you plan, things start to happen. Things start to open, doors start to open. Things get easier, things come to fruition. So keep planning. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Deb says, I'm not too proud or embarrassed to wear and use secondhand, but appreciate quality when available. I take good care of everything I own and operate to the best of my ability. Downsizing is happening. Okay, I'm right there with you. It's to the point now that everything I wear is, is now secondhand. I have not purchased anything brand new. Okay, I fib, with the exception of undergarments. I do undergarments brand new. But beyond that, everything else, I get my jeans used on eBay because I can buy them for like five bucks a pair, six bucks a pair, it's awesome. And there's certain thrift stores that are loaded with jeans up in the big city that some of them still have the tags on. I'm totally there with you. And the other thing is you can get quality clothes at the thrift store that you can't buy in the stores today. Like uh, some of the stuff is older and what's funny is the stuff that I got rid of is now coming back, so it's kind of funny. But I, I too, I, get, I buy wool, I buy good quality made sweaters, um, jeans, t-shirts, you know, um, L.L. Bean, uh, Land's End, uh, Woolrich, it's amazing the names you can find when you're in the thrift stores. And I've paid, I got Austin like three different Woolrich coats for a buck a piece. I mean, those babies are, are expensive to buy new and they're good quality and they'll last forever. And you said about things lasting, I am now blowing holes in jeans that are probably 17 years old. Shoes the same. I have a pair of boots that are finally now, the bottoms are starting to crumble. 17 years old. I take good care of my stuff. I'm still hard on it, but I take care of it. And that says a lot. And being able to do that and not have the need to keep buying something. I mean, it's really easy when you go into the stores with all the marketing they have going on to think you need to have to have something. You know, sometimes that hits me too. And then I'm like, I don't need that. And I only buy what I need. That is the key thing. I love secondhand thrift stores, antique stores. But when I go in there, if I see something I like, but I know I won't be able to use it, I don't, I don't purchase it, no matter how much I like it. So let's see here. Uh, Shelly says, I have to get rid of more stuff out of my house, but want to, oh, I read that one already. Let me see. 
Here we go. There's the other one, Shelly said. I was dropping some stuff off at the secondhand store and had some time, so I went in. I scored four new to me shirts and a pair of shorts and a puzzle for nine bucks. Awesome. Those days, I love that. You know, when I moved to the farm, I, I was leaving a, um, a, a dangerous marriage and I didn't have a lot of the things I needed for the house. And my girlfriend and I, who is loves to thrift like I do, we went shopping at a thrift store and they were having this huge sale to clear out because they had just gotten a whole ton of stuff. So it was like, buy a, uh, whatever you can shove in a paper bag for $3. And all their household items were like half off. I had a Subaru Legacy at the time. It was a four door with the, with the trunk. And I had that car loaded down to the point that Austin just had enough room to sit in it when I picked him up and everything else was nestled around him. I got lighting for the house, I got furniture, I got uh, stuff for the kitchen, I got bedding, I got clothes, and I spent $36. I'll never forget that day. That was the craziest thing. I've never shopped like that before. That was just so awesome. So you can do it, and there's really nice stuff out there. You just gotta look around, and you gotta be patient sometimes. When your needs are there, you just need to be patient and go find things. But those are the kind of days that absolutely tickle me is when, like Shelly just said, for nine bucks, she got those things and couldn't have touched them anywhere else. You'd be lucky to get a puzzle for $9 somewhere, so that's really awesome. Um, Deb says, I was caretaker from 2005 to 2012 at three different places. One 800 acres, top of the world, awesome. Gorgeous place and other acreage to raise my son on until I bought my five acre property in 2012. That's awesome. That is so awesome. And, and that's just it, you know. Um, the farm I landed on, you know, he always laughs when I say that, but that's what I feel like, I landed there. God, God brought me down and I landed there. Um, 150 acre farm, mile long lane, middle of nowhere. My landlord couldn't understand why I wanted to live there by myself. She couldn't understand that I wasn't freaked out. I'd go for night walks on the lane. It was just awesome, it was an awesome place. And you know, the rent there was like $300 a month. I mean, it was just, it was insane. So, you know, God does provide. And when you focus and, you know, really uh, focus on your dreams, focus on your desires and, and pray that you're walking in God's will, he will meet you, you know? And, and when you're walking in his will, like I said, the doors will open, things will become available. So I wanna read some things to you guys today. Um, I've got a couple here. My machine will cooperate. It's not. There we go. Okay. And by the way, guys, if you guys have prayer requests, anybody watching the replay, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments or you can email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. Um, okay. I thought this was really awesome. Uh, Philippians 4 6. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers. Rachel and Jim owned a commercial building half of which Jim used for his dental practice. For 15 years, they had no difficulty renting out the other half, which provided extra money to pay their bills. Then they lost their renter, and a real estate agent told them, forget about advertising for a while. Absolutely nobody is renting. To ease her stress, Rachel started swimming laps at the local YMCA pool. And one day when she was feeling especially anxious, she decided to pray as she swam, using the alphabet to keep track of the number of laps. She focused on adjectives to describe God, starting with the letter A. You are almighty God, she prayed during lap one. B, a benevolent God, a bountiful God, she prayed on the next lap. And then C, you are a caring, creative, can-do God. By the time she completed 26 laps, an hour had passed and her fears were gone. She knew God would provide. A short time later, a physical therapist called to say she'd noticed the for rent sign and asked to see the office. It was exactly what she wanted, so she and her partner rented the space. Rachel still prays while she's swimming laps. Did you need something? No. Okay. After all, she says, I've discovered God's goodness stretches from A to Z. Are you worrying about something today? Here's a better option. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and request to God. Then because you belong to Jesus Christ, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand, and this peace will control the way you think and feel. 
You know, we all get anxious. We all get overwhelmed. I mean, you know, even though there's little in here, looking at all the things and not knowing where to begin, it still, it still can become overwhelming. You know, when, when you're in a pandemic and you're not sure of the outcome, it's easy to get anxious and overwhelmed. But when you focus on God and focus on the good, that overwhelm does go away. And I think I read that one to you guys last week. I think, do you guys recall if I talked about Moses last week and how he uh, was focusing on his, the big reward, the, the final reward, rather than all the rewards from, I'm pretty sure I read that last week, so I'm going to jump to this one. Um, these kind of go in line uh, with what we've been talking about. Um, Hebrews 11.25, he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God. When we live life, we need to focus one on God, and then we need to focus on our happiness, um, our goals, be willing to roll with the things that come our way, be willing to persevere, and um, we need to take responsibility for our life. Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. And first, Moses refused to be anyone but himself. Next, he chose to go God's way. The principle here is that you can always replace a negative with a positive. You don't just stop doing something. You start doing something else. The Christian life isn't a matter of negative rules and regulations. It's a matter of relationships with God, with other people, with ourselves. Notice Moses made his decision. When he had grown up, it's a mark of maturity when you can settle the issue of personal responsibility. When Moses was a baby, it was okay to postpone the decision about who he was. But when he became an adult, he had to make a choice, assume responsibility for his own life and move ahead. It's always easy to blame others. I'd go God's way if my boyfriend or girlfriend, mother or father, husband or wife would do it too. Or I'd be a better person today if I had better parents. You can't choose all the circumstances that come into your life, but you can choose whether those things will make you a bitter person or a better person. I love that. I so love that. Ultimately, no one can ruin your life except you. Truth. Because we allow it to happen. We allow, if we allow other people to keep us from reaching our dreams and become bitter, we are allowing that to happen. So the devil can't, but be, the devil can't because he doesn't have enough power and God won't because he loves you. You choose to go God's way. So again, we have choices. We have choices to choose to be positive or negative. We have choices to choose whether we want to embrace our dreams or let them diminish because we don't act on them. Okay, so Hebrews eleven twenty six. He is he was looking ahead to his reward. You must determine your priorities. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as a greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Much of the world's wealth during that time was stored in Egypt. So Moses already had what most people spend their lives trying to get, popularity, pleasure, and possessions. Yet God asked him to do something that was more important, and he did it. It was a matter of priorities. Moses could easily have rationalized, the slave situation is bad, so I'll stay in the system and work for reform. <laughs> I love that. Most of us want to be liked, but there's one big problem with popularity. It never lasts. You can be the big shot on campus for a while, but when you return a few years after graduation, you'll likely find that nobody thinks you're special anymore. Then there's pleasure. Is pleasure wrong? It isn't wrong unless it's sinful. Then there's, there are possessions, and there's nothing wrong with material success. Some of the greatest people in the Bible were extremely wealthy, including Abram and, and Solomon. But Jesus said, life does not consist in, a, in an abundance of possessions. Ultimately, wealth doesn't bring happiness. Ask the people who have it, how much money does it take to be happy? The answer, just a little bit more. Money is to be used, not loved. God wants us to use things and love people. But if we love things, we'll end up using people. 
Moses had his priorities right and he devalued material things because there was something more important in his life, namely God's will. And fourth, Hebrews eleven twenty seven. by faith he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. You must persevere when life gets difficult. You could sum up the life of Moses in these two words, he persevered. It's a fact of life that there's no gain without pain, no advancement without adversity, and no progress without problems. Moses understood that, difficult, that difficulties come into every life, and he knew how to respond to them correctly and move on. And he must learn to do that. We must learn to do that too. As followers of Christ, we should never let problems defeat us. Instead, we should let them draw us closer to God. Someone has said that we should never let problems get us down, except down on our knees to pray. I love that. God allows specific situations in our life to bring growth, and without perseverance, we won't get very far. Notice the words, by faith, he persevered. Faith in what? Faith in whom? Faith in God. We're not talking here about some white-knuckled, flesh-based form of self-help. No, we're talking about the fact that when God calls you to do a job, he equips and he empowers you. He goes ahead of you and provides everything you need. When you say yes to his plan for your life, you can stand on this promise. We know that all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8.28. Bookmark that. So you must, A, know who you are, B, take responsibility for your life, C, determine your priorities, and D, persevere when life gets difficult. If you abide by these four Bible truths, you will live a life that is truly blessed by God. I thought those were great. They all kind of molded together and everything kind of came together this morning, like two minutes before I went live. And you know, you guys have seen us walk things out. You have seen us persevere through extreme difficulty. You have seen us and heard me share that I've had to walk away from people because of the toxicity level and um, their inability to see my worth. And their inability to understand my desires and my dreams or that of my family. And you know, when it comes down to it, we are not on this earth to please anybody other than God. And when you put your focus there and you focus the tr on that truth that we are here to follow God's will, we are here to um, do God's will in our life, step out when it's uncomfortable. Um, I'll tell you what, when you allow God to lead and he asks you to step out in faith and you have to step out, step out in great and a great level of uncomfortableness, what growth comes from that, let me tell you. We've had to do that a couple times now. And now I, I, I eagerly await the next time because it's an amazing feeling when you are really stepping out in his will, you know, um, and people don't understand that. People won't understand that. And people will believe, think that, that God would never ask that of you. But God asks us to do things when we are in a place of little. And um, when we are in those places of devastation, because that's where he will be glorified the most. And it's quite amazing. And it's quite amazing because a lot of people will be led to God through those experiences, but also the growth that is uh, gained from such events. So I want to encourage you guys um, to really um, pay attention to how you're thinking and talking and feeling and uh, really seek God's will in your, uh, in your dreams and in your desires in life and allow him to lead the way. You know, a lot of times our dreams will come to fruition, but they won't be exactly how we wanted them to be. But remember this, I promise you, they will be bigger and better than you could have ever imagined. And that has been true in everything that my family has done, is that when we are stepping out in God's will and letting him lead, even though it's not exactly how we want, it ends up being better than we could have ever imagined. So I encourage you guys 
to keep doing that, even through this chaos and, um, you know, with things going um, the way they are, things are so uncertain. But with God, there is an uncertainty. There is a plan. And when we seek God for our dreams and desires, they'll come true no matter what's going on. I promise you that. Um, okay, Tammy says she may lose us. She has to run to town. Deb says, good devotion and valuable story. Professing our praises is so powerful. I let the enemy grab me at times and I fall apart. Then I'm back on my knees praying for forgiveness and his direction. You know, we're all in that. And you know, that's part of being a Christian. You know, so many people think that when you become a Christian that everything becomes perfect and and that we're supposed to be perfect. And, and we are supposed to try to walk it out in, in perfection, but it will be impossible because the only perfect person on this earth was Jesus. We are made of flesh and we are bound to sin. But the key thing is what Deb just said, is that we catch ourselves and we realize that we've done something out of line and we ask for forgiveness and we pray and we commune with God. And, and continue our efforts. The more, and I'll tell you something also, the more you focus on walking the walk and talking the talk, the easier, easier it becomes to do that and not have as many flaws. The more we focus on those things, um, the, the better we become. And the more we focus on God and want to follow his rules and his direction, the easier it becomes. So for those of you that are new Christians that are struggling, know that the, the more you pull into him, the more he is present in your life and the more direction you will gain because you're seeking him, you're seeking his direction, you're seeking his will, and you will start hearing that still small voice where when we're in that hustle bustle or we're still in denial of, of, our will versus his will, it's harder to hear that still small voice. So, and for those of you that don't have a relationship with God, you need to understand that when he died on the cross, he died on the cross for all of our sins, not just mine. And the relationship I have with God that I share with you all the time is not just for me, it's for you. He, when he died on the cross for our sins, he died on the cross for every one of us. And he offered at that point eternal life to every one of us. All we need to do is accept it. So all you need to do is simply pray to God and ask him to come into your life and to forgive you for your sins and to be present in your life. And that will be the start of your walk as a Christian. You start delving into his word and reading the Bible. You start uh, communicating with him more and praying with him and talking to him. Um, your, your life will continue to flow. It doesn't mean that your life will be perfect, as I mentioned before. A lot of times, you know, as a Christian, our, our walk is a little harder because the enemy now wants to fight to gain you back because God just got you. So, you know, there are going to be challenges. There are going to be struggles. That's why so often in the Bible it is repeated to be courageous and to persevere. And having great faith in God is trusting something that we can't see, but knowing that he will take care of us and trusting that he is present and will provide. And he does. You know, when you start walking in faith instead of fear, there's a lot of power there. And as I've shared many times with you guys, I don't have fear and I don't have worry in my life anymore. And for that, I am forever grateful because I hated being in that place. I hated caving to fear and worry, where now it's not even part of my thought process, which I am just so thankful, because I hate wasting time, and I certainly hate wasting time on negative emotions. So I just want to encourage you guys to deepen your relationship with God and keep pursuing your dreams, but making sure that your, your dreams are in, in the line with what God's will is for your life, because sometimes it's not, uh, and it might sound hard to hear that and be disturbing to hear that, but he'll take you to good places. He'll take you to places that are better than you ever imagined. And in doing so, his will will open up 
a whole lot of new avenues for you and things that you desire so much more that you never even knew existed, if that were to be the case, that you are not walking in the will of God. But when you are, you will know it and you will feel it and it is just so amazing. So I'm going to say a prayer here and let you guys get back to your day. I've got a yard to mow and stuff to pack. So Papa, I just thank you for this opportunity to commune and fellowship with these amazing people. I thank you for bringing them into my life. I thank you that we are able to be together and draw others close and and just uh, be a powerful unit. It's amazing to have a strong community that is seeking you. And we're just so thankful for that. And we praise you for the healing uh, hand that you put on Pat and Mark. And thank you for helping to heal Copper. And just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Thank you for opening the doors for the mountain boy that he can uh, be stepping into this aviation and missionary field for you. And just thank you for all the things that you're doing in his life right now and the amazing people you're presenting to him. Thank you that we are able to uh, constantly feed off of each other here and help one another and guide one another, share our ideas and our thoughts and in a community and in a place where it's safe and you don't have to worry about being who you are. We are all your children and we are called to love and this is just so amazing and I thank you for opening these doors for me to be able to initiate these live videos and, and be able to uh, have our weekly communication because in this situation where we've been steadfast and homebound and there's so many rules and regulations, it's so comfortable to have this space and this place where we can all be together. And I just thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives and how you're going to nudge everyone that was present and listening to the replay today to embrace their dreams and embrace you and your desires for their lives and to not worry about keeping up, but keeping up with you and rather than others. And that we are able to be ourselves beautifully and wonderfully made. And I just thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for blessing us with Christopher, that we have the extra set of hands. Just bless him. And thank you for enabling us to do all of this and share it with everyone. And I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone. Those that are in need right now, just be with them. Those that have lost loved ones, just be with them and love them and help them through these rough times. And as for the rest of us, just help us grow in you, strengthen us and help us to keep our eyes on the prize and, and focus on living for you and, and not for the world. We love you and thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives and ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. I want to encourage you guys to get out there and embrace your dreams, embrace your days. Deb says, I should mention that my son Sterling came home Monday night from being in Alaska for five months. Quick but right decision. He is blessed with selling his car and blessed then finding a nice Dodge Dakota pickup. Awesome. That's so awesome. You know, and, and I'm really excited for Sterling that he had those five months to experience something new. Just uh, feeding from your comments last week, you know, how you really also enjoyed being there, being able to see it and um, spend that time with him. But, you know, every we have to remember that every experience in our life, even if it's us like trying to step into our dream, and then when we do that, we realize that maybe it wasn't for us. Those experiences grow us. They culture us. They teach us things. They also help lead us into where we are supposed to go. You know, a lot of times we step into our dreams and think that's the, what we wanted and realize that, you know, God had something bigger and better. And, and as we do that, he opens those doors. He blesses us. And I'm so excited for Sterling with his truck because it's like Austin with his car. We had Austin's truck for sale for forever. All of a sudden it sold and it provided just the exact amount he needed for his car. So 
it's just pretty awesome to see how things transpire and how God has a hand in our lives. And the more we are paying attention to how much God loves us and how much he does take care of us, down to the little nitty gritty stuff, it's pretty funny. I have to show you guys something then real quick. Um, Deb says, amen to all of your prayers to our, our papa. Love you, Tammy, and all are in here. Facebook, my Facebook for any communication, Deb Rich. Girl, I appreciate you. I love you too. And I thank you for your prayers. I thank you all for your prayers. You know, you guys have really helped carry us through some tough times with your prayers for us. And we extend those prayers and pray for you guys every day. And um, you know, you guys know I see hearts. You know how God is always showing himself to me with hearts or we see eagles and then just different things. We were sitting here last night and something so simple, but I know you guys will appreciate it. I gotta move a little bit to show you. Do you see that? I know it's something so simple and so funny, but I'm gonna spin this around. That is a roll of bags. It's like trash bags, but it's laid there and it's all coiled up and the mountain man looked over and he goes, oh my word. He goes, did you see those bags? I'm like, what are you talking about? And I look over, so we all kind of got a laugh out of that. So God shows himself. God shows himself very presently all the time. And just another little funny story of how God works. Let me show you this too. When the mountain man was doing the stonework here on the for the fireplace, he chipped away this little center so that that stone was a heart for me. But if you look closely down here, right below it, there are two hearts side, two hearts side by side. Here's the one, and then there's one following it. So it's like a double heart. And that was already there when he put that one in, but he hadn't seen those. So, it's just funny. Um, I know those are my, hearts are my thing, but God just shows himself so present in our lives all the time in so many different ways. So seek the joy, seek the happiness, pay attention, self-monitor, keep yourself in a positive place. There is so much to be said about staying in that positive place. It helps you heal. It helps you live. It helps you live longer because you're not living in a stressful place. So Turn your negatives into positives and seek him and just enjoy your life. Regardless what's going on, you know, there's a lot of chaos. There was a lot of chaos for us for four years, but we still found ways to enjoy life. And that's what we need to do now. Pay attention to your surroundings, but enjoy your life. There's so much to be lived out here. So I love you all. I just saw Deb say something. I'm going to check that Oh. She just makes me smile big knowing how God blesses us when we keep him first. Yep, exactly. I love the hearts everywhere in life when we take notice and then make a special notice of them. Exactly. It's just so funny. I see them everywhere and it just makes me, it does, it makes me smile. It makes me smile greatly. Just to know that he's present and just, it's a simple pleasure. And you know what? When you live a simple life, you find a lot of simple pleasures because you're living simply and you don't need a lot to keep you happy. And that is just such a full filling feeling. So anyway, guys, I love you all. I'm going to send you off. Have a fabulous day and know that we'll be praying for you. And I look forward to seeing you as of right now. We are regular Wednesday, 1030 Pacific Standard Time. If for some reason I am unable, I will put a post on both the community here on YouTube as well as on Facebook. <sighs> I'm so thankful that you were here this morning as well and love you all. So take care and God bless.